I asked for a copy of the letter that the former Foreign Minister, Ms Bishop, had written uh, in relation to her concerns about monies um, um, being diverted, and I was rightly told that it's not the practice to publish the letters. Accept that, raise the white flag on that, but can I ask, have we had a response to Minister Bishop's letter? In Africa Division, yes, there was a response to the, foreign, uh, the former Foreign Minister's letter to the PA office. Are you at liberty to disclose its content? Um, uh, I would probably suggest the same applies to the extent that this is a diplomatic exchange. Right, well, we were told as much that um, Ms Bishop's letter was an what? An expression of concern mm -hmm. um, um, without telling me the exact response. Was it just a complete denial, a middle finger salute? Um, you know, what, what was the response in general terms? Uh, I think it's fair to say that um, given the former foreign minister's decision, uh, there wasn't enough assurance provided in the letter that um, so can I, sure. sorry to interrupt, but to truncate this, mm -hmm. in other words, the minister sent a letter, we got a response, after which the minister made the decision. So that response came before the minister made her decision in relation to funding. That's correct. All right, look, that's all I need to know and thank you for that. in relation to the fund for the families of martyrs, to the best of our understanding of that fund, would the families that lost family members during the demonstrations of which I was talking about mm -hmm. uh, be able to draw on the fund? And then I was told the Palestinian Authority has advised that the Palestinian Liberation Organisation provides financial support to convicted prisoners, detainees and their families without reference to the motivation behind the alleged or proven crimes. So have we accept, do we just accept what the Palestinian Authority tell us? Um, because one assumes that if there are Palestinians in prison in the area controlled by the Palestinian Authority, convicted prisoners would not be benefiting from such a fund. Further, if a Palestinian was in jail, let's say in Israel for fraud, they wouldn't be the beneficiary of such a fund, would they? Um, we will have to clarify that yes, with the Palestinian Yes, if you could, because authority. the assertion that they provide financial support to convicted prisoners um, without reference to the motivation, I find that a bit hard to believe, especially when in their budget they have a specific, um, as I call, understand it, a martyr fund, or um, which suggests that there has to be a motivation behind um, their death or imprisonment. Then, can I ask, uh, what are the details of DFAT's recent efforts to solve problems in terrorism financing uh, risk management in its uh, Palestinian aid program? To it. Like, so, for example, in the past we have been told about how wonderful things are with our uh, provision of funding for education, only to find out that the books um, that the young children are given are telling them to hate uh, Jews basically from a very early primary school age. Well, you know, when you tell me and the Australian taxpayer that we're giving money for education, people would say big tick, that is great, only to be severely disappointed that nobody checked on what was actually produced under the education in inverted commas uh, heading, which uh, allowed for books that I think Senator Lionhelm has canvassed in some detail in previous estimates. Senator, I can certainly confirm that there, there is on the ground check. In fact, um, I myself was actually in the P, 
Palestinian territories recently, engaging in some of these conversations with the director of the UNRWA operations. And there, for example, I specifically raised questions around textbooks. And as you know, Senator, uh, UNRWA is required to adopt the textbook of the country in which they operate uh, because the students are subject to the country's educational uh, system and testing. Um, the, the, uh, this particular director, Scott Anderson, himself um, spoke to me quite frankly about how some of the textbooks that they are using, they recognise that around 2% of the content could be regarded as quite controversial. And in order could to address be. that, well, it is contro controversial. Thank you. It is controversial. Um, and yeah. in order to address that, uh, UNRWA puts in place complementary material to try and neutralise that content, take their stu uh, teachers through rigorous training to actually to talk about how these things should be delivered in and the how, most neutral And how way. successful is that? Well, uh, I think students are being educated and uh, a lot of these Palestinians are in great need of quality basic services, including education. And as we all know, uh, but, but UNRWA... But how, how do these books then slip through if there are people on the ground vetting everything, because, you know, irrespective of where the money comes from, be it Europe or England or whatever, one imagines that that sort of content in textbooks would not be acceptable. Um, as I indicated, these textbooks are textbooks of the country that they're actually operating in, thereby being developed by the Palestinian Authority in this case. Um, yeah, however, yeah, but with whose money? Uh, well, um, sure, the books are being developed in um, the Palestinian territory by the Palestinians for the Palestinians, mm -hmm. but the fundamental question is with whose money? is this happening? And if it's with our money, I think the Australian taxpayer wants an assurance that um, that money is not being put to the sort of use that has been exposed previously by my colleague, Senator Lionel. Uh, well, as to whose money, I'll have to take that on notice, but um, because I'm not sure whether it's the PA that prints them or whether it's UNRWA. Wondering if you are uh, aware of recent uh, media reports that would uh, that, uh, indicate the um, uh, city of Jerusalem is proposing to take over the educational functions previously undertaken by UNRWA within within Jerusalem uh, for the reasons that I raised at last estimates and, and um, uh, Senator Betts has just referred to. Are you, are you aware of that? I'm not a um, senator, so once again, I, I'd, it would be really useful if I could actually uh, have yep. a look at what so, you're referring to. Um, and the reason is, um, as, as we have uh, discussed, the, there's a newspaper article from the uh, Times of Israel which quotes uh, a, a person by the name of Bassam Eid, who's said to be a human rights act uh, activist, who's been studying UNRWA's schools and institutions for years, and, uh, and uh, it's quite a lengthy quote from him, but he refers to, uh, or he says, he's quoted as saying, I've worked in several UNRWA schools in the territories and in Jordan, and children aged nine to 10 want to be killed and kill Jews and to release their people. Who taught you that, I asked. They said that was what they were learning in schools, and I asked teachers, at UNRWA schools in Jordan, if children were taught to blow themselves up and be killed, they said, of course, how else will they liberate the land from the Israeli occupation? UNRWA is aware of this and the international community knows that all UNRWA studies are full of hate and incitement. The international community continues to inject funds because it is against Israel. Now, this was written in the context of this media article um, reporting that the mayor of Jerusalem has uh, has joined the uh, several other organisations with raising concerns about this, and they do something practical about it um, by taking over the education, all the education within the Jerusalem area. Um, I'm I'm wondering if, um, in light of that, assuming that goes ahead and that media report is accurate, if UNRWA is required to do less 
education because Jerusalem's, the municipality of Jerusalem is doing more, um, whether in fact we may uh, re review our own contribution to UNRWA. Um, well, I, I, I wasn't aware of that report, uh, Senator, so thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, I, I guess with regard to UNRWA's role, uh, as you know, they're providing service for 5.4 million Palestinian refugees in both the PT area, but also Jordan, Lebanon and Syria. Uh, they're providing um, really, as I said previously, basic quality services for Palestinians in need. The Mayor of Jerusalem is again reported in Israeli media uh, briefing a committee of, of the Knesset in which he showed a school textbook um, used by UNRWA in East Jerusalem and it, uh, it refers specifically to Dalal Mugrabi, um, a ter terrorist, a Palestinian terrorist who murdered 35 civilians in a bus attack, a bus attack in Herlitzia. Um, uh, so this is being distributed in UNRWA schools. Um, and this is one of the uh, pieces of information that he presented to this Knesset committee and is one of the reasons why the Jerusalem <coughs> municipality is taking over the education of Palestinian children in the, in the municipality area. Um, are you familiar with that, uh, uh, with that claim? Sorry, Senator, I was not. Yes, all right. Well, we now have the American administration has withdrawn funding from UNRWA, as you confirmed <laughs> recently. I understand the uh, a parliamentary committee of, of the EU is also reviewing funding of, of uh, UNRWA. Are you familiar with that? No, I wasn't aware of that, um, mm. Senator. Okay. The um, EU has certainly been a, a very strong sponsor of UNRWA in the past. They, they, you're, you're quite right, they have indeed. Um, but I understand there is some growing sensitivity around what the funds are being used for. And, uh, and I'm, I am informed that there is a review underway as to the EU's, uh, use of the EU's funds. There's actually been a net reduction in funding to go to the PT, or it's just been reallocated since uh, the uh, Man Development Centre or, or feeder are no longer being funded. There's been a slight reduction from 43.8 million to 43 million, Senator. Okay. So 0.8 of a million. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that still leaves a, uh, a four-year agreement with UNRWA of 10 million but five million of that was brought forward to the current financial year, so it now makes it 15 million, was that right? That's correct. Clearly, I think that Australian taxpayers would be worried if their funds were uh, being used to publish textbooks which um, promote uh, the glorification of, of suicide bombers and uh, terrorists like that, do you agree? Yes, of course. Okay, so that um, if, it, if you uh, made inquiries and confirmed that uh, what the Mayor of Jerusalem has told this Knesset committee is accurate, uh, would I be safe in assuming that uh, there would be a review of, uh, of, that, of the funding that goes towards that? Um, Senator, I mean, that's Henry a matter Minister. for government. Um, uh, is this a matter of interest to the government in terms of what's being done with uh, Australian taxpayers' money? Senator, the government has taken a number of decisions recently preceding my uh, taking up of this role, as, as you would be aware, uh, in relation to concerns uh, across a range of issues, but broadly speaking, of the nature that, uh, that you have raised. Uh, and yes, we would uh, continue to, uh, to uh, want to monitor those sorts of, uh, of issues. Uh, you've raised a number of uh, matters today uh, that officials uh, have uh, not been aware of. Uh, they will now be...